94.3 the Ox, old Joe Diffie there, and there is something women like about a pickup man on your Monday ride, 8.30, and time for Coffee Talk, brought to you by the Comanche Chamber of Commerce and Agriculture. Check them out at hashtag explore Comanche Texas. As we say good morning and welcome into the studio, Cynthia Newton from Hope Counseling. How are we doing? Good morning. I am... <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I went to Houston, and I came back, and I can't breathe, so... I well, there you go. I think it's Houston. I'm what pretty sure. Yeah, I got <laughs> good quality of air down there compared to us. You know, I grew up there. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I don't miss it. Uh, I, I grew up in Dallas. I don't miss it either. <laughs> miss some of the people, but not the town that much. The, the traffic, I can definitely do without. So if I cough this morning, I promise it's just my asthma's all flared up. It's the Wuhan! And then, and then we have, you know, I mean... Wind gust of uh, 50, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it, doesn't it? I saw you get out of your car and you're like, like leaning. You look like one of those news reporters in a hurricane. We got pretty it good wind like shear. Pretty I'll good wind shear stickling downtown this morning. But tomorrow it'll be 70, 70 degrees again. Yeah, so you gotta love hot. Texas. Exactly. But, you know, I had to break out the winter sweater yeah i got in trouble for calling it a christmas sweater it's, it's if, a winter sweater. if you're online kids take a look at that and tell me what you think that it's is. a winter sweater look it's a winter sweater it's okay. not a christmas sweater christmas would be like okay it looks pretty christmasy i do that so i can wear them longer see it's oh. winter you see, you, you, if once christmas comes you're not supposed to wear christmas sweaters okay. i'll wear a christmas sweater next week okay. just so that you know we'll we, see we the can difference differentiate between the two and make okay. sure that everybody knows so, on to real life in the fast lane. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've been talking about grief in the holidays, but we did, we haven't really talked about how to welcome people into our homes during the holidays or how to prepare for that, because that can be a mental preparation There's some itself. grief. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have a large family or even a small family, and there's often drama when you get together. Sure. I mean, we don't ever, nobody has that, right? Nah. Nobody has drama with families. We're all going to get together, discuss politics, and just be happier Absolutely. Than I mean, that is just not something that, you know, brings out the drama, or, as you said, the shotguns. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, oops, that was before we were on the air. I apologize. Anyway, so, no, so what do you need to do to prepare mentally before your family and company arrives. So we're going to talk a, bit, a minute about that in just a minute. And then we're going to talk about how to prepare for your grown kids or your college kids coming home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. That, that's a little bit of a deal. Um, just be prepared with lots of laundry soap. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So schedule a little bit of alone time, even if it's just 15 minutes. Your boundaries are an important part of you being a good host. Stepping away for a few minutes or a few hours may help you to be more present with your family when you get back. Your family would rather have positive quality time than to see you miserable and stressed. I mean, that's that's not fun, is it? You know, that the host be like stressed out and then that just creates this ambiance of negativity. And then, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's not fun. So a flexible meal plan and schedule. Don't have to st stick to that strict timeline, okay? Try to be as flexible as possible. You don't need to impress everyone with your cooking for every meal. Even though we're in Texas, folks, for those of y'all that are not in Texas that watch me, just understand this is a Texas thing. You know, you just have to feed everybody all the time when they come to your home. Again, That's you don't know my in-law. <laughs> 12 o'clock, starving to death, starting to feel faint. Right. 12 and 5. 7, 12, and 5. You, you, need, you need to encourage them on flexibility. Okay. So you don't need to impress everyone. All right. But there is a lot of non-stressful meal, meals. Frozen lasagnas. Buy some casseroles. Make some casseroles. Freeze them. Pull them out. You know, heat, heat them up. You know, do some of that while they're here. You don't have to worry about the constant, okay, I've got to make every meal from scratch. You will wear out, you will burn out, you'll be tired, and you're not going to enjoy your time with your family. Call you, the pizza guy. <laughs> well, you know, that's great if you live in a place where it delivers. Yeah. There are a lot of people listening that don't. But they could go get it. Well, they could. Like, for me, I would just have to drive about 20 miles to go get well, the pizza that and drive your, home. Well, that gets into your 15 minutes alone oh, time. Point. See there? Good I'll point. work that together. Right when they show up, you go, you know so what? do I leave the kids alone <laughs> to destroy the house? Absolutely. <laughs> no, I would not do that. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so, think of some things that, that require you a little bit of time so uh, that aren't as stressful, all right? Have some puzzles, movies, games ready. I mean... 
I know everybody's like, what are you talking about? I mean, we're just going to have the PlayStation. Okay. Y'all have electronics all the time, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that a little bit, but intermix some things that you can actually talk while you're doing games and puzzles and, and things that gives you a chance to connect um, and give everybody that needed downtime. It may also provide you with an opportunity to take that break you're needing from hosting. Uh, okay, so now how do you welcome your kids and your college-age kids back from the break? This is kind of a big thing. I've actually had some people um, lately, and this is uh, – kind of ask what, what am I supposed to do how do I get ready for this I'm not really sure do I treat them as guests do I treat them as oh they're home so remember that things have changed okay it's not the same as when they went to college this is an adult now that has mostly cared for themselves for the past few months they've grown up a little hopefully <laughs> since you saw them last that's a hopefully um, they may not need as much parenting as they once did Things like permission to do things and curfews may need to be discussed and reevaluated since the last time they were home. Don't expect them to come in and be like, okay, I'm going to stick to, you know, the same curfews and all of that because you have to remember they're an adult now. So it is a little bit different when they mm -hmm. come back. They're tired. Most likely they've just finished final exams and are sleep deprived. Try to give them a little bit of rest and don't overschedule the first few days. Everyone may need a little adjustment time. They may have other people to catch up with while they're home. Giving them time and space to see friends in town will show that you respect them and may help them to have a better attitude and time when they participate in family events. They're not guests. They're home. Remember that. Picking up after themselves and doing a chore or two can still be expected. Okay? You know, they shouldn't have to do everything for them. I mean, they have been on their own, so they should be able to manage. No, I'm putting, but, I'm putting them rascals to work. When they, <laughs> all right, get in there and clean that room. <laughs> but becoming, coming home and being that part of the family again, and it's okay to spoil them a little, but make, make your home feel like a safe place, and, and doing that will mean so much to them, even if they do not express it. Kids are awful about just, you know, expressing what it means, but I can guarantee you, the, the more that you do to open your heart and open that home and to open, you know, everything to them and to try to make them comfortable, 10, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road when you're, like, old and in a nursing home that they put you in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lovingly, lovingly put you in. <laughs> They're going to remember those times. They're going to remember, hey, you know, we pulled out that puzzle. We did some I remember when we played Monopoly and, you know, I remember this and I remember that. And, and those are the things that they cherish, not what you ate, not, not the meals, not you slaving away in the, in the kitchen over every single meals. No, it's the togetherness that they absolutely remember. The big fist fight that occurred during charades. Oh yeah, that, that too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Cheaters. Oh my stars. Man. So I hope none of y'all have drama. <laughs> In your life or in your family, but if you do, prepare for <laughs> prepare for those least the least amount of stress that you possibly can in your home setting and getting ready for the holidays. I mean, it is what? How many more days until Christmas? Not many. <laughs> I think it's night. What is today? Is nineteen days until Christmas? Yep. There's only two more shopping weekends left. Yep. Full weekends left before Christmas. That's like giving me a panic. No, I was just kidding. Say, there's some stress <laughs> developing right there. That's stressful. It is. Um, no, it's the wrapping that's beginning to get stressful. But um, anyway, so I mean, just just enjoy this holiday season. Go find some things. Go do some things. You know, take that time. Your family's coming in. Take them to take the uh, the the lights on the square. You know, that's an awesome thing to do. I talked about that last week, and and my kids love it every year. I mean, it's just something that's great. I think this weekend. Yes, Saturday. We have something coming up oh, that's it's going pretty on. special. Sip and shop. Yeah. So there's like all sorts of things going on in downtown Comanche. I mean, this is the big city, guys. We're going to have all sorts of things. I am so excited. There's going to be pictures with Santa, pictures with the Grinch for those kids that don't like Santa, <laughs> and Cindy Lou. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't even fathom. And then the Christmas parade at 6. Uh, there's Christmas drink making contests from 1.30 to 5. I, I'm, I just can't. I'm excited. A full day of activities this Absolutely Saturday. Absolutely a full day starting at 10 o'clock. So come on down to Kamichi this Saturday and bring your kids. I know there's lots of towns that are doing lots of activities. So, sure. I mean, just just take that time with your family. If they happen to be in, just, just take a little bit of time to just do something different. Get out of the hustle and bustle and just enjoy the holidays. Yep. So be ready, guys. We're coming up. Christmas <laughs> will be here before you know it. And then we get a new New Year's resolution. Oh, man. <gasps> oh, no. Oh. <laughs>
again. <laughs> All right. So as always, we're here to help you through everything at Hope Counseling of Texas with offices in Canchi. Canchi? <laughs> new town. Uh, Comanche. Yes, I opened a new office. Uh, Comanche, <laughs> Dublin, Hamilton, and Eastland. Call us. Give us a call at 325-356-1105. That's 325-356-1105. Find us on Facebook or on the web. Um, again, just let us help you any way we can. Uh, we do accept all insurances, and um, we're here for you. All right. Cynthia Newton with Hope Counseling. Thanks, all as right. always. Thank you. For a special announcement. I talked earlier. Ago. I went by the Christmas parade in Brownwood and I made eye contact with Santa. He looked right at me and he goes, I don't think that's a good sign. I don't think I'm getting jacked for Christmas. But to get together with all my friends that got a lump of coal, maybe we'll have enough to barbecue something. You might want to stop the Facebook recording.